you came with your notepad. <laughs> So today we are really ready and poised for the conversation because she brought her notepad. Yeah. Now, okay, so before I even introduce you, maybe my studio audience do have a few concerns with regards to, you know, fertility. Let me ask them what they even know about fertility because they are young. Mm -hmm. So I just want to throw the test to them and then I introduce you. Sure. So guys, now I want you to tell me what you know about fertility. Anybody in your audience, talk to me. Yes. Go ahead. Tell me what you know about fertility. When you mention fertility, what comes to mind? Mm -hmm. What I know is the fact that you are... You qualify to, like, give birth as a lady. Or if you are a guy, you can also produce a seed into a lady which qualifies her to give birth. Okay. Not bad. Who else? So, um, mine is about the cycle, mm -hmm. the lady cycle, mm -hmm. and also the men's um, private parts. Okay. That is what okay. I mean. All right. Okay. So, the lady cycle. Okay. Who else? It's good. It's good that that's what you know because we are going to learn so much today. Yes. What about you? Okay. So, me. Uh, well, my idea about it is how strong the semen of a man is that it can, uh, when it meets the egg of a woman, they can produce, uh, let me see, they can uh, produce, produce a child or a children. baby. Okay, yeah. nice. Who else? I'll take the last one and then I can now go deep, deep, deep. Yes. Okay, so please pass the microphone to the back. I think he wants to speak at the back. Okay, to my knowledge, fertility is about childbirth, how compatible one is to give birth. Okay. Hmm. Well, it looks like almost everybody makes a lot of sense, right? Exactly. Okay, so my guest is Ruth, and Ruth is here. She's actually a public health professional. Ruth Asantua forcing a public health professional who is here to help us understand what fertility really is, what we are to look out for when we talk about fertility issues. Now, you can send in your questions. Send it early so that she can answer all the questions to 055-157-5757, 055-157-5757. Five, seven. Mm -hmm. Now, Ruth, the, the message that came in earlier in okay. the course of the week actually mm -hmm. made us aware that we needed to discuss this topic on changes. Okay. People don't even think about it. They think mm -hmm. they, are, you know, they are so fertile, nobody ever thinks that, oh, I'm infertile, and so mm -hmm. I'm getting married, and the next thing is the next one year, or within that year, I'm supposed to get pregnant, or the next two years, I'm getting pregnant, I'm having my children, we start a family, and that is it. But we'll talk about fertility issues. Mm -hmm. What really is fertility? Okay, thank you, Roslyn. So when we talk about fertility, so we are trying to say that the ability of a male or a female, obviously an adult okay. or of reproductive age, your ability to conceive or get a female pregnant. Okay. That is when we say you are fertile. Mm. Uh -huh. So basically it's a man's ability to impregnate a woman successfully and it's a woman's ability to get pregnant. And when you say a woman has gotten pregnant, we are not just saying the egg and the sperm have met or fused, mm -hmm. okay? Once they fuse, they are supposed to travel down, okay? They form an embryo, they travel down, and then they, they settle in the womb. Or let me say they implant in the uterus or the womb. Right. That is when we will say officially you have become pregnant. Okay. So you can have your husband's um, semen or sperm fusing with your egg, but it hasn't traveled down to implant in the uterus. That's one we'll say you're not officially Fertile. pregnant. Okay. Uh-huh. Mm. So once you're able to do this, the man is able to impregnate you, you're, or you as a woman, you're able to get pregnant, then it means you're fertile. Wow. Yes. So when we take a look at this, okay. then we say, when do we say this person is fertile or that person is not fertile? Okay, so you can say my sister in jeans is fertile if she has um, regular sex. Okay. Without contraception or a birth control. She has had regular sex for about 12 months, that is at least 12 months to a year, 
and she's been able to get pregnant, then you say she's fertile. Okay. If she doesn't do that, she's not fertile. Within a medically. year? Within a year, that is at least, not within a year, at least a year. Okay. Regular sex. Okay. Now, when we are saying regular sex, what are we talking about? So maybe my brother in his locks and his wife, they have sex every two months. Mm. And having sex every two months, whenever they have sex, it's outside her fertile window. Okay. It's going to be difficult for her to get pregnant. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we are saying that you should have regular sex. Within your fertile period? Within your fertile period. Okay. It should be regular, no contraception, no birth control. You haven't done the coitus interruptus that is pulling out. Mm -hmm. You haven't used any um, injectables. You haven't done any implants. You haven't used condoms. Regularly, you've done this consistently for the past 12 months. If there is pregnancy, you are fertile. If pregnancy does not happen, there is infertility. So when do I start checking to know if I have a problem or I don't have a problem with regards to fertility? Okay, so with women, I would advise once you start having your periods, you are of childbearing age. So you should be concerned because one thing is, as women, once you start having your periods, it doesn't mean you are actually laying eggs. You can be having the period. So let me explain right. that. So during your menstruation, what is happening is your body, your ovaries, release an egg. So this egg is going to travel down your fallopian tube, and then once it's in the fallopian tube, it takes about a day or two waiting for a sperm to come, just like we have the picture there. Okay. Then the most successful sperm comes in, meets the egg, they fuse, mm. then they form a mini baby okay. for everyone to understand. Once this is formed, they travel down into the uterus or the womb, where they, they implant. They clear a nice space and implant. Now, assuming you're going to have a visitor, wouldn't you want to clean your house and arrange things, make sure everything is in place? Exactly, that is what your body does. Okay. So your body is going to make sure your uterus is rich with blood. The tissues are rich, okay? There's a lot of nutrients. So that when baby comes to stay in there, baby has nutrients to grow. But you made a point, mm -hmm. and the point was that the fact that you are going through the menstrual cycle mm -hmm. does not automatically mean that you are fertile. Mm -hmm. So as a woman, when do I start checking if I'm fertile? Is it right when my menses start, I start going to the doctor to find out from the doctor, am I fertile or I'm not fertile, or when? Or is it when I get married that I start checking? When do I check? So once you have started having your period, after your flow, you can start checking. We have a test, we are able to check if you are ovulating, okay. you are releasing eggs. Okay. So we have this um, phase in our menstrual cycle, the follicular, the follicular phase. Mm -hmm. So within this phase, that is when the follicle, that is a small egg, is going to be released. Okay, so now between that time and the day it's actually released is about six to seven days, depending on a woman's body type. So within, so let's say after your period, for the next one week, with a few days on, you can start doing an ovulation test. Mm. So we have the ovulation kits. You can use it every day. So you, you know, for the next one week, after my period, I'm going to be testing my urine for okay. ovulation. Mm. So as you ovulate, there is a hormone that comes, okay? You'll be able to pick it up on a test kit. If you do that continuously for the next six to seven days and it's not coming out positive, you, I think you should be concerned. You should see a doctor. Let's do further testing. Okay. For all you know, you have menstruated. You didn't release an egg. So it's just the uterus that was prepared for pregnancy that has been shared off. Mm. But there wasn't an egg in it. So once you notice, okay, so I didn't ovulate this month, I didn't ovulate the next month, your doctor will now be able to know if this is actually your problem. Maybe it's hormonal. We try and find out the cause, and then we can put you on treatment. It can be hormonal? It can be hormonal. Right. And yes. if it's hormonal, then where did you get it from? So if it's hormonal, it means, you know, our menstrual cycle is all controlled by our hormones. You have the estrogen, you have the progesterone. Uh-huh. There are certain... Um, 
conditions that can make you have a hormonal imbalance, something like a polycystic ovarian syndrome. Mm -hmm. A condition like that may inhibit your body from producing eggs. Uh -huh. So in cases like that, you may have the PCOS without you knowing, okay. and you wouldn't be releasing eggs. Mm. Yes. So, so then I, I, I come to ask this. As a parent, is it advisable to let your teenagers check for their fertility, uh, you know, how high their fertility rate is, or you should wait till they're getting married? <laughs> okay, so with this one, I think it's <laughs> it's a little relative okay. because, um, you know, there are some parents who wouldn't want to expose their children, their teenage children, to sexual reproductive health at a tender age or let me say at an early stage because they have the perception if I introduce them to it, they get to know it and they become curious to practice it. Mm -hmm. And there are some parents who are very open to that. So me, practically me, I will start um, educating my child once she's having her periods and all that, I may probably wait till around 17, but the earlier the better. You know, our children are uh, menstruating quite early these days. So once you are having your period, I think parents can go ahead to have these tests done to make sure their children are ovulating. It shouldn't be maybe every month, but from time to time, you let them understand this is how it works. Okay. This is the kids at home. Once you do it with them, mm -hmm. they begin to understand. I, I am of the belief if everyone understands why they do the thing, the why mm -hmm. they do the thing, it's easier for them to appreciate and comply. Okay. So if you have your teenage daughter and you're explaining to her, this is why I want you to do this test, mm -hmm. this is how it's going to affect you in the near future, once she understands it, She'll comply with it and then you can be checking. Once you see the problem, as soon as possible, you start working on it. Because if she has an, um, a hormonal problem and you don't see it as early as possible, it's going to cost you and stress you later on when you find out. If you discover it early, is it easier to solve it as compared to when discovered late? I always say the earlier the better. Okay. Yes, the okay. earlier the better. Why? Because with women especially, you know, as we age, our fertility decreases. After a certain age, it begins to decline. So if you do not start checking it when you were in your early 30s, or say 18, 19, early 20s, early 30s, and you are waiting till you are 35 and beyond, by then, nature by itself is setting in. And you are now discovering you also have another problem okay. adding to it. Mm. It's going to make the whole treatment kind of stressful for you financially, emotionally, psychologically, it becomes stressful. But if you had seen it earlier, we would have put you on medication. Maybe your medication, your treatment needs a course. Okay. Once we start it early, you are able to finish it and then you can now conceive. But if you wait till the letter, it makes it all complicated. Are all infertility issues treatable in women? Um, in a way, I'll say no. In a way, no. Wow. Yes. Okay. Because if you have infertility, you could be fertile because they are. Um, so let me say, if you have surgeries in your pelvic area around the uterus, the fallopian tubes, and all that, and after surgeries, just like you have a wound on your skin, there's a scar. Yeah. When the when the wound is healing, sometimes there is what we call the adhesion. So they stick together. The tissues stick together. Mm. If you had that inside, let's say, your fallopian tube, and that's the tube where the um, egg is going to pass through into the womb, and there are adhesions that are blocking it. Imagine you are in some village somewhere and you don't know. How are you going to treat that? Mm. No matter the medication we give to you, this is something that requires surgery. Okay. Yes. But if you can afford the surgery, Why if you not? can afford any other treatment, let's say tablets or something, then that one, or medication, that one, we can say that is treatable. Is that then, what it is? Then you've treated it. Wow. Yeah. Wow, wow. So this is how the reproductive organ of a woman mm -hmm. looks like. It's on the screen right now. Uh, walk us through it, please. Okay, so do I have to stand? Oh, no, you can talk to it. Okay, all right. So on my, um, is that my right hand yes. side? So we have the woman. Oh, okay, I think you can walk to it. I can walk yes, to it, great. You should, you should walk to it. Right. I have my pointer right. here. Right, so this is our lady. That is her organ, reproductive sex organ. Now you come here. 
these are the ovaries. So with these ovaries, that is where is the production house. So you have your eggs being produced in here. Okay. So once the eggs are produced, they come out from here mm. into the tube. This is your fallopian tube, okay? And you have another fallopian tube here. So on a normal, you have two. In rare cases, you may have one. Uh -huh. because they are birth defects. So you release the egg. Oh, so you can actually have just one? You can have one. You may not have it. So if you, you can... have one, are you fertile? If you have one, <laughs> it can come. You so can you release. Can still give birth? Yes, okay. you can. Hmm, I see. You can. All right. Yeah. So you produce the eggs in here. It travels through the fallopian tubes, comes here. Maybe around here, your sperm comes, and then it meets the egg. They fertilize. And then now they move. This is the uterus. Okay. So once they move in here, they are going to stay in here. It will either attach itself to this part, this part. That's how pregnancy will happen. Then here, you come in here, and that is the cervix. The mm. cervix is the tip of the womb, or let me say, the doorway to the womb. So as a woman, you can always feel for your cervix. Mm. Your cervix feels like the tip of your nose. OK, so as a woman, you can always bend or squat with very clean hands without sharp nails like mine. You can insert the middle finger in there and feel the cervix. If you feel it and it's painful, you may be looking at a possible infection. Okay. So, Which can also prevent pregnancy. Exactly. OK. Because this infection, once it heals, it's just like when you have a wound on your skin. It heals. Some people have a hypertrophic skin so they get the hypertrophic scars like keloids mm. okay so once the wound heals it leaves a little scar a little scar so if you are fond of having unprotected sex and you have multiple partners mm -hmm. which increases your risk of infection sexually transmitted infection you are at risk of getting a lot of pelvic inflammatory diseases meaning this... that you are reducing your fertility exactly risk. wow yes wow yes so are you hearing <laughs> <laughs> and this pelvic inflammatory disease can affect this part affects the uterus affects the fallopian tube can affect your ovaries mm. yes. so imagine you keep having every year you have five pelvic inflammatory diseases you keep having it keep having it very soon your scar will be very huge and it, we can't do anything about wow. it. So you just have to be careful mm. it, 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 it costs nothing to use a condom Okay, uh -huh. so let, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. One can be fertile and at a point become infertile. Is that what it is? Yes. Okay. When you get to your menopause stage, you are fertile, you are no more fertile. Okay. If you have a lot of pelvic, pelvic inflammatory diseases or maybe a pelvic surgery that causes scars, which leads to adhesions, you are fertile. Now it's inhibiting your fertility. Some people say accident can actually cause infertility. How true is this? Okay, so infertility is your inability to get pregnant or impregnate a lady. So for a woman, you have an accident and the trauma is, maybe there is a puncture wound to your okay. pelvic area. That is this part. Okay. And then there is a severe damage to this. And at the end, we have to do a total hysterectomy. That is complete removal of your uterus with its surrounding organs. You become infertile. You become infertile. If you are a man and it affects your testicles, okay, what you say, your testis, aha. Uh -huh. If it affects that one, it means you're not going to be able to produce the sperm, the semen, and you cannot impregnate a woman. Right. Exactly. Wow. All right. <laughs> you have a lot of questions, right? I'll come to you with the questions. Uh, let, me, let, me, I, let me finish with my questions. <laughs> Let's move to the male. Okay. You know, because we usually concentrate on the female mm -hmm. and we leave the male. At what age, again, will I ask, should a young man check for his fertility? Hmm. With this one. <laughs> I am not saying go and do it. But you see... Yes. When you get to um, the adolescent stage, mm -hmm. where you begin to produce the semen, you begin to produce the sperms, now you are having the desire for sex. Once you're having the desire for sex, I think it's a cue for you to now check your sex, um, your sperm, 
and your semen to make sure your sperms are actually in the right shape because that tadpole thing you saw, yours can be abnormally shaped. It will affect you impregnating, aha. Uh -huh. right. Yours can also be moving in abnormal ways. Mm. Everyone is going this way. You decide to go this way. <laughs> you not hit the target. So, so, so the shapes exactly. are not the same. Is that yes, you can have an abnormality where the shape of the sperm it's a little changed. Oh right. Mm -hmm. I see. So let's say you, you know this. Yeah. This is your sperm. Mm. That's the head. That's the tail. Once you get to the target, your head enters. This breaks off. Okay. But if you have an abnormality and this, your head is somewhere else, what is going to enter? Ah, so that's it's not a tail that fertilizes, it's okay. the head. That is where the vital info is. Wow. Uh -huh. So you can have this. Maybe you don't have enough sperm, but you are producing the semen, which is the fluid. Mm -hmm. But the sperm in it is not adequate. Or the sperm in it, they are not strong. They are very weak. They can't even swim for that long to hit the egg. So as a man, it makes you infertile. So I think once you begin to have these um, secondary sexual characteristics, okay. you can always check it. I always advocate mm. it should be part of a um, premarital test, semen analysis. Mm. Let's see how your sperms are moving. What quantity do you have? Mm. Are there strong What's enough? What's the right quantity that a man should produce? Okay, so that one, I will not give you the figures. Okay. Yes, okay. because depending on each lab, you may have a little changes. Right. We just need enough to be able to go in and fertilize the egg. Okay. Uh -huh. So I think it should be as early as you have started having the desire, the sexual characteristics, you are beginning to have sex, you should start checking it. Can lifestyle mm. affect? your production of sperm? Yes, it can. Lifestyle one, men who like wearing so many underwears. Oh, oh. <laughs> exactly. So if you notice at some point your, your, your scrotum, the ball, the sack, okay, the scrotum becomes, um, it becomes loose and it's hanging. Uh -huh. At some point, it becomes tight very rough, and then becomes very tight balls. Aha. Chini Becca Sire said dark one. Aha. That's how it is. So, if so you they, wear, wear, they shouldn't wear tight. No, too much heat. No, their body regulates it. That is why at some point, when you're in a cold weather, it constricts. Okay. Tightens up. When the weather is hot, it relaxes. Mm. So, the, ah. <laughs> <laughs> so you see. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, when you wear too much tight clothes, it means you are putting in too much heat there. Mm. The sperms are not so strong for so much heat. Uh -huh. So just leave it and then let it free itself. So, so yeah. often you advise that men should not wear underwear. They should actually do... <laughs> oh, I'm not advocating anti-pay, but anti-pay is nice, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So you need to wear the underwear too because why do you need to wear? You can't walk around in your corporate trousers with your little boy dangling in there. You need to wear it and support it. Okay. But not you wear a boxer, you wear another one, then you wear your trousers. I mean, why? Mm. Uh, why? So just your underwear and then your trousers okay. is fine. If you are at home, you can use the, um, is it the boxer? Sometimes I confuse them, but the free one. Yeah, the boxer. You can wear that. Not the and, briefs. The briefs uh, are the tight ones. Uh -huh, so, so the boxer. boxer. Okay. You can mm -hmm. wear that one, which will allow the air to pass around your That's scrotum good. and all that. Okay. Uh -huh. When you're taking in a lot of alcohol, mm. it's, it's, it's in a way going to affect your fertility. Okay. Yes. As a man? As a man. Right. Yes, even as a woman, mm -hmm. too much of alcohol can affect you. When you are smoking, especially with the tobacco, it's, it's going to affect you. We heard that uh, sugar intake also can affect the production of sperm. How true is this? Okay, so sugar, 
too much sugar. Let me just put it like that. Maybe you're drinking fizzy drinks and all of that. Okay, so when you're taking a lot of fizzy drinks and all that, indirectly, not directly to the sperm, mm. but what you are causing is you are causing a lot of glucose level in your blood. Okay. Okay. Also, oh, it, it, it won't affect your sperm production at all? It's not directly to affect your sperm production, but um, pardon the chill language, but I'm not uh -huh. Why? Because a lot of the sugar, if the body is not able to process the sugar, okay, it's going to rise so high, it will damage your nerves. Oh, all right. So you can't have erection like you used to. Exactly. So maybe if you could have erection for like maybe 30 minutes, now it'd be it like reduce. one minute. Oh, right. And if you can't have erections for long, at some point, if it's not controlled and it's completely erectile dysfunction complete, you can't do anything. Well, sugar can do that. Wow. Small mm. voice at the back. You guys have a lot of questions. <laughs> See, I, I, think, I think on this note, I want, to, I want to go to the audience so that they can ask their questions because they are so eager to ask their questions. Okay. <laughs> this is the first time I'm seeing more than, you know, 10 people wanting to ask a question <laughs> at the same time. And I know Shola is also getting ready to bring us all the messages. If you haven't sent in your messages yet, you can still go ahead. Every question you want to ask, Madame Menes, Madame Doctor, she's here to tell us everything. And you can send us the number on 055-157-5757. 055-157-5757. So who's going to ask the first question? All right, please go ahead. <laughs> Okay, please. My name is uh, Mr. No Time. Okay, Mr. No Time. Okay, so you, you were advising us about the guys wearing many boxes and all. Mm -hmm. So what about the ladies? Because <laughs> some wear pants, boxer. <laughs> they wear the weather pants and the boxer. Yeah, yes. Mm, interesting. Okay, so with that one, um, they do not have the balls like you do. But you see, the more heat you put in there, the more you are going to... Let me give you an example. You set out for the day. You urinate, you have debt accumulating and all that. The more you provide a lot of heat to the um, vulva area, mind you, I'm not saying vagina, it's the vulva area, it means whatever bacteria you have gathered throughout the day is going to, um, you give it a fertile place to grow. Mm -hmm. And then too much heat, you know, in the vagina, there is a pH level, let me say an acidity level, mm. acid alkaline, there's a level there. If you are putting too much heat there, you are going to destroy that um, pH level, which is also going to destroy what we call the normal flora in your vagina. Okay. Once that is destroyed, it predisposes you to certain infections. Wow. So too much heat is not good for you as a lady, it's as it's also not good for you as a man. Wow. Just your panty, if you have to put on an underwear, that's nice. If you have to put on a jeans I trousers. I have a friend who that. says the grandmother told her not to wear panty at night to sleep. Is it advisable? <laughs> See how they're happy. Okay, so wearing panties to sleep, it's actually relative. Okay. Some people enjoy it that way. Okay. And uh, we wouldn't say it brings any particular health benefit because if you observe it too, if you often sleep naked, you have a lot of air going in. Oh, are you getting uh -huh. water tummy? You, 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 you have these, a lot of vaginal um, fats. Oh, right. So during sex, you, you see sometimes you, ha you have this fat and... Um, the noise. Exactly, oh. the noise. Oh. Uh -huh. There is a lot of gas in there. Oh, uh -huh. right. So you not wearing a panty to sleep is not directly giving you any specific health benefit. It's relative. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's relative. Anyway, any more questions? Yeah. Okay. Um, how can alcohol affect your sperm? How can alcohol affect your sperm? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So when you are taking in a lot of alcohol, it's going to damage some of your nerves. Okay, the blood vessels and all that. Directly, it's coming in straight to, you know, when it comes to too much of alcohol, it tends to destroy cells. Mm. Mm -hmm. Sperm is a group of cells. So you are taking in too much of it, you are going to destroy cells of the production unit. You remember the production unit I mentioned? 
the scrotum, the ball, okay. your testicles. Okay. Uh huh. <laughs> so now you are destroying it. How do you expect the production to come? Okay. Mm. Yes. So I'm, I'm a bit concerned because when you look at social media now, there's there's so much education on the use of clove concussions. So what is the uh, relationship with the clove intake and then fertility? Mm. The clove? Yeah. yeah. Ah, the clove. The <laughs> there's, there's the clove, there's, um, yeah. I think, okro, right? Yes. There's okro, there's clove, uh, so many things. They have pineapple. This, yeah. some, pineapple. Is it boric well? acid or something? Okay. They insert it in there. Yeah, they have funny. these. Mm. Yes, they have all these things. So, um... These concoctions that you are drinking, it's not actually, it's not actually releasing an egg for you. It's not causing you to produce the sperm. Because if your sperms are weak, I'm wondering how garlic will make them strong or give you, garlic will give you more sperms. How? Exactly. So, you know, these concoctions indirectly give you a high libido. Some of them give you a high libido. But, but if alcohol can kill the sperm, why can't garlic give you sperm? Um, garlic producing the sperm, maybe we'll have to do a lot of research on that. Okay. For All the right. garlic to produce mm. the sperm. Mm. Uh-huh, we'll have to. Other than that, I'm sure a lot of men are going to take a lot of garlic and eat it. Okay. But you see, these concoctions, um, you may drink it, um, a woman who say, uh, old woman who say that it's boosting fertility, this is the herbal aspect, okay? But if you are using it, something like the cloves, it has this antimicrobial. So if you are using it to wash the vulva area, it's okay. If you are douching it in there, no. What if you are drinking it? If you are drinking it, it's actually treating other things apart from your vaginal health. Right, okay. Because mm. clove juice has good benefits from your intestine as well. Wow. Uh -huh. Okay, we are learning a lot today. Yeah. I, I know you want to ask some questions. Yeah. Oh, uh, how many more? How many more? Yeah. Two. All right, let me take a few messages and then I'll come to you. I'll definitely come to you. Don't worry. So um, I, how many hands did I count so that one, two, three, four, five, five. Same five, I won't, I won't add more. Uh, Shola is on standby to give us every detail with regards to those of you sending us messages from home. Hi, Shola. You look beautiful. Stop, stop. Oh, oh darling, you look so beautiful. <laughs> it's like every week I hear the same thing. And, you know. Oh, but you do look beautiful. I think I've got to come for that. You know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Myra's close set international that makes me look so this lovely. good. So yeah. her number is displayed on the screen. Go and get your dress. Right, you can look. I would have given you a 360, but today nah let's let's get straight to social media because there are lots of comments on there uh, we've told you that whilst people are at home enjoying mm -hmm. people are also you know sending us what they are thinking their questions they yeah. really want to know i've learned a lot i know they also want to uh, find out a lot so uh answer our messages this one says hello hello to you too this one says that hey i don't know um <laughs> i really love okay let's come here i said what foods improve fertility what are the most common causes of infertility? And how can a man check if he is fertile? Um, this one says that... Um, so before you continue, let, let's say answer. What foods can improve fertility? Okay, so with foods, you have um, a lot of protein. Good protein. That's the white, the lean meat. Okay. Uh, good lean for meat, you. The in white eggs. Chicken. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, right. Guinea fowl. Okay. These are white meats that okay. are very good. Right. Source of protein. You know, sperms are protein. Mm. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. <laughs> but you don't eat it. <laughs> yes. So these ones, a lot of vegetables, a lot of fruits, okay. uh -huh, they boost your body's ability to produce okay. um, um, quality cells, this, quality this, this semen and all that. Okay. Uh -huh. So these are good. Some will say you should you. be eating garden eggs. Some mosaic tomatoes, mm -hmm. but because I'm not a dietitian, I'm not okay. going to tell you to eat okay. garden eggs so that every day you are going to be eating garden eggs alone. Please, so, um, there's, there's a question coming in. Uh -huh. Those who like uh, pork meat, they want to know if it's also good. Pork. pork. Pork is actually, when you read about pork, research says it's, it's actually good. It's mm. good? It's, it's a good source of protein. Mm. Yes, that's good meat. for fertility. It doesn't 
Okay. It's not directly okay. with fertility. Okay. So please, you can eat your pork, but always remember, too much of it is bad. Pork has some fat in it. You are going to fry it or whatever you want to do with it. If you eat too much of it, you may have the consequences. All right. And too much of everything is bad. So just keep that at the back of your mind. Okay. Thank you. All yeah, right. Ali. There's more. This one says, hi, ma'am. I'm a teenager who has her menstruation four days instead of seven days. Mm. Mm. Um, it also starts at the end of every month and always ends in the beginning of every new month. Can you please ask the health personnel if I am safe? She wants to know because... It's still seven days, she has four, and it always starts at the end of the month and enters into the next month. So she wants to know if she's safe. Um, this one says that I have, <laughs> this one says, please, I need your help. I have a lower sperm. The person wants to oh. know what to do. <laughs> and this one says that, hello, you experience blood after the sex. What does it mean? As a lady, three times a week, she experiences um, blood after sex, and she gets that three times a week. Before you continue, let, let, let Let's me answer, answer a few of the questions. Okay. The so. four times, you know, menstruation, exactly. instead of seven days, she's getting four days. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the menstruation days, we have um, a period from eight to three days. This is averagely between, it's within the normal range. Okay. Okay. So if you have seven, it's okay. Six, five, it's okay. Four, you are okay. Some actually have three days, and then on the third day, um, on the fourth day, they have a little discharge or spotting. Okay. Uh -huh. So I want to assume hers comes um, three days, and then she has the, the spotting and all that on the fourth day. Which is uh -huh. fine. Is Which is fine. fine. Okay. Once you get to two days, one day, it indicates there is a problem. You need to find out. Okay. Exactly. Right. And then there was another question. Um, the one who said that he has a lower sperm count. Lower sperm count. Yes. I think that he has to go to the hospital, right? He needs to see a doctor, a specialist. A specialist. Yes. All right. All right. Yeah, this one, one says, hi, please. I'm Victoria from Takwa. I want to know if, as a woman, you have any symptoms after you, your period, which will help to know if you're ovulating. I mean, she wants to know what shows that a woman is ovulating. Would you mm. see them after? And are there signs to look out for? I think um, there was a question that came in. Sorry, I'm cutting hmm. you, Shola. There was a question of she having discharge after sex. Blood. Blood. Yes. After sex. Yeah. It's not normal. It's not you normal. shouldn't have blood after sex. If you're having blood after sex, um, you should be checking. Maybe her sex is too rough. Too rough, yes. So there are abrasions <laughs> that are causing bleeding, or there's actually a pelvic infection. Okay. So once she has the sex, or maybe the cervix, that's the tip of the womb, is inflamed. Or maybe there is some uh, cervical abnormality, cervical wow. cancer or something. You need to check all that. Wow. It's not normal to bleed after sex. Okay. Great. All right. Mr. says, good afternoon, Rosalind. Please, I would like to, or I would like Mama Ness to educate me more on the yeast infection. I have had two miscarriages, and the second one, my doctor told my husband and I that there's an infection in my womb which has made my cervix open wide and result into bleeding. So wow. he has no choice than to remove my five-month-old baby, and it was really painful. Pam. I would like to know what I should do, even though the doctor gave me some med medicines, and I am afraid if I take it in going to happen it's going to happen again this is um nanaya she wants to know um let me add one more this one says that hello please i want to ask doctor if having an abortion can affect your fertility rate and where can we buy the fertility test kit um this one says that it is normal to feel pain in your balls maybe once in the blue moon another question is, is it does it, oh sorry this one says is it normal to feel pain in your balls maybe once in the blue moon Another question is, does wet dreams or releasing of sperm affect your fertility as a man? Okay, before you continue, let's, let's answer a few of the questions. Okay. I mean, today, the messages that are coming. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so which one do I go for? I first? think we should do the miscarriages. The miscarriage, um, yeah. Okay, with the yeast infection. With the yeast infection, yes. Okay, so when we're talking about a yeast infection, um, it's an infection called by candida. Mm. Okay, what we commonly call white. So once it comes in there and you keep getting it, it's easily treatable, okay? But um, there is a difference between the candidiasis and then the pelvic inflammatory disease, which is caused by different types of bacteria, okay? So I want to assume it's just candidiasis she keeps having, which, when treated, wouldn't cause um, 
infertility. But Unless there is a pelvic inflammatory disease. And from what she's saying, her doctor, she's lost two babies, two babies already. Yeah. Yeah. And her doctor had to do a DNC because mm -hmm. of the infection. Yes. And yeah. if you remember, she said the doctor said there was an infection in the uterus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Candida says it's mostly in the vagina. Okay. Uh huh. So in the uterus, maybe we are looking. I just want to ask you. Maybe we are looking at a pelvic inflammatory disease, okay. which has been there for long. Mm. Once the pregnancy happens. Then the whole place is infected, so it's a hostile environment for the pregnancy. It can make you lose the pregnancy, can keep making you lose the pregnancy. And these are caused, they are more sexually transmitted, they are a bit sensitive, so I don't mm. want to. Oh, and they are such, we are learning today, yes. so they are sexually transmitted. Yes, the pelvic, pelvic inflammatory diseases, these bacteria are sexually transmitted. So it could be your partner giving it to you. Mm. Wow, okay, so if you keep having it. So let's say um, gonorrhea, the organism that causes gonorrhea causes chlamydia, they can come together, give you a pelvic inflammation. The reason why we are calling it pelvic inflammation is because it can affect your uterus, fallopian tube, the pelvis. Wow. Uh huh. So once they affect these, sexually transmitted, so now sexually it's sex. Okay. So I will take just three messages mm -hmm. and then I can let, get my audience message, questions and then we can wrap up the segment. All right, All so, right. so let me take three more. This one says that, um, please, doctor, I have a lower sperm count and I need children. Please, uh, can you help me? This one says that, um, hi, I am 30, I'm 32 and I don't have feeling. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> feelings. Um, this one says that, please, which food can help to increase more sperm? And then this one said that, please, if you are not menstruating for about four months and you are not pregnant, is it going to take effect on your fertility? Okay, so that's so the only question, question she will answer with mm -hmm. regards to these ones. The yes. four months yes. menstruation. So usually we call something amenorrhea. Okay. That means you are not having your menses. Uh -huh. But with that one, we have a cup, six months, okay. without your period. Right. Uh huh. Then we will medically come in and diagnose you as having amenorrhea. Now that can affect your fertility mm. because if you are not menstruating, you are not le releasing an egg. Wow. So maybe you are actually not releasing. Maybe there is a medical condition sitting somewhere that is preventing you from having your periods. So that, but with the four months, she needs to see a gynecologist so that some tests will be run to make sure it's not a hormonal problem or any problem that is beginning. You don't mm. have to wait till that six months for us to classify you as having amenorrhea. Once it started, four months is enough Go to, to see a guy in it. Wow. Exactly. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> we have learned to today. The messages that are coming in, I think today we have more than like what? More than 20 messages that are waiting, but unfortunately, time will not permit us to, you know, read any more messages. And we are not here alone. DJ Brida Shotia! <laughs> DJ Brida Shotia, and he'll be giving us, you know, some, you know, dancing tunes very, very soon. I don't know if he has any questions with regards to fertility. <laughs> DJ Brida says no. He says he's, he's, he doesn't have any questions. He's not going to talk about fertility issues today. He's already a daddy, so he won't bother himself. Oh, okay. Saying anything. Congrats yeah. to you. Uh, so, on that note, we want you to give your final advice. Guys, I couldn't come to you, but unfortunately, I know we'll have to meet her behind the scenes and ask her all the questions. No problem. So, uh, you, <laughs> before you go, uh, your advice to young ones and married couples who are expecting children. Time will not permit me, unfortunately. Please, please give your advice. Hey! Hey, now you, you like this topic like that. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Okay, so I would like to say when we talk about infertility and its management, it's not one size fits all. It depends on what your problems are, what your cause is, and then we'll be able to handle it for you. There are so many avenues to be able to treat it. Okay, so once you are sexually active, once you are menstruating, once whatever it is, you are sexually mature, it's time to look into it. If you were a man, you should start checking your semen and your sperms. If you were a woman, start taking your ovulation test. You can get the test kits in pharmacies. You can buy them and then you start. Start observe, as a woman, start observing your menstrual cycle and then 
once you notice the change, it's easier for us to help you because it's your body. So from now, we are informed. Let's take charge and then help ourselves. Great. So uh, the there are so many messages coming in, but maybe if you know somebody wants to ask you questions, are you willing to put out your number or where you are located that they can come to maybe your, the hospital and have access to some education? Yes. So if you want to come to a hospital setting where you can have access to me or um, very good prescribers, you can always come to Medcare Plus Clinic, which is on the Agoba Ashoman Stretch, Old Ashoman Stretch, Medcare Plus Clinic. You can always come there. And if you want to contact me directly on um, Instagram, it's uh, Ohima Santoa. Okay. Yes. And uh, on Facebook, you find me Ruth Asantoa Force and Oireko Asantoa. But um, if you want to contact me on WhatsApp, um, it will be 0550-236-712. Okay. For any health concerns, health education, health advice, I'm readily available to sort you out. Ruth, thank you so much for You're being welcome. here. She deserves another round of applause. Thank you so much. Uh, for Educating us this yeah. afternoon. I've learned so much. Shola has learned so much. And I know my studio audience, they've learned a lot as well. No, I'm not coming to you to ask any questions. 